Today we're going to be looking at some Vim stuff, basically my Vim configuration. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while, people have asked for it. I have Vim set up how I like it. Vim is great, it's very customizable. And uh, for a long time I've taken all my configurations for Vim and I've put them up on GitLab. So you can get them there, but haven't really talked about it or shown it, so I thought I'd do that. Be aware that this is something I wrote for myself and I'm just sharing with you, so it might not be the uh, cleanest code, um, but it works for me and I want to share it with you and show you how it works. Uh, basically it's going to, um, warning, because uh, it will overwrite your current Vim configuration and Tmux, uh, so you're going to want to make sure you back up yours if you use those two programs, which you will if you're going to start using this configuration. It's going to install a few packages, so when you run the script to install it, uh, it's going to ask for your pseudo password. Don't trust me, don't trust anybody else. If you download code from online, especially if it's asking for a root password, at least glance over the code. The installer is very short, you can look at it. It's, you can see it's using the sudo command to, again this is designed for Debian systems, it's going to run apt to install a couple of packages, the current version of Vim, FZF, and maybe one or two other things, Tmux. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and have a look at it and uh, see how it works. Okay, on the left here, I have a virtual server I just set up with a minimal install of Debian, so it's fairly bare. On the right, I have my Vim project on GitLab. It's gitlab.com forward slash melx1000 forward slash my Vim setup. There should be a link to it in the description of this video. If you don't see that, I forget to put it there, or you're trying to find it later, just go to filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. That's my website. Click on software. Down here, you can click on GitLab. And when you're there, you can see all my projects. This one's usually high up on activity because I'm constantly adding new templates to it. Uh, but you just go there and you can clone it. Or in this case, just to keep things simple in this video, I'm going to right click and copy the zip file. Over here on my server, I'm going to download that zip file. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. Unzip that zip file. It takes a second, it's very small. We'll move into that directory. We will list out the files and you can see we have a backup.sh and an install.sh. The backup.sh is mainly for me but it could be for you if you were to clone this project. Um, so basically what that is is after you do an install of this configuration, it's going to copy you know, all your configuration files to your home directory. If you make any changes to your Vim setup, you can go back into this project, run backup.sh, and it's going to pull all those changes and you can push them back up to GitHub or GitLab. Um, the install.sh, there's two options for that. You can just run install.sh or you can run install full. Uh, so what's the difference? We'll go ahead and start running that. This will probably ask for your password. I recently just typed it because uh, it's going to try to run commands of sudo. You see it's doing some app stuff to pull down some packages, so it's going to need your password. Uh, again, look at the script. Don't just trust me. It's a very short script. Make sure it's not doing... I'm just saying that in general. Don't trust anybody. Look at the script. It's, it's only a page long. Um, but that's why it's asking for your password. It's going to try to install a few other things. You can just go ahead and enter for most of those. You'll get an error right here because it's looking for a color scheme that we have not installed yet because we need to install our plugins, which is what it's trying to do now. We'll go ahead and enter. The first set of plugins installs super quick. We can then quit out of Vim with colon Q exclamation mark. Do that twice. I should see if I can have the script automatically exit out after installing the plugins. Then it runs the second batch of plugins. This is the part that takes a little while, is that you complete me. Uh, it's a auto-completion plugin. It's got to compile some stuff that takes a little while, but it should automatically do it. And that's the difference between just running install.sh and install full. So install full, you only have to run the first time, theoretically. It, it's going to do all the apt stuff and bring down the plugins and compile what needs to be compiled. If you just run install.sh without full, it's just going to copy over the config files. So I'm constantly making changes. If you want to get those changes, you clone the repository again or pull an update of it and just run, in this case we'll say dot slash install dot sh. And you can see how much quicker that was because it's just copying over the config files without having to install all those applications. Either way, it doesn't take very long. It even reminds you if you run it without full here to run it for a full installation. And I have a flash so that it reminds you if this is your first time installing it on a system. Okay, so now that it's installed, let's go ahead and have a look at it. 
Okay, so again, there's a lot of features in here. It adds, it adds uh, FZF Fuzzy Finder features that we'll look at a little bit, mainly for switching through buffers, and also it will, you'll see with my templates, I usually have it set up that you, I had these templates, you'd start typing something like for my JavaScript templates, you would type JS, then you hit Control X K, and it would bring up a list, and you can scroll through them. Or if it was a shell script template, you would hit type SH, and then hit Control X K, and you would type through the, search through the list. I changed it once I learned about FZF Fuzzy Finder. Now, as I'm about to show you, you can start typing. You hit uh, Control T, and it brings up a list of all the templates, and you can start searching just by typing. And then, basically, it's a shell script that's going to cat out that template into your current project. And these can be sometimes they're just you know short functions. Sometimes they're single commands. They're just long. Sometimes they're full blown web pages or scripts. So let's have a quick look at that. Okay, one important thing: the installer installed Tmux but it does not start it up and you need tmux for some of my functionality so you're going to want to type in tmux now if you do this and you run it and you get an error about key binding on line 8 that's because between different versions of tmux they changed how some of the key bindings are listed and so if you're running a different version of tmux than me it might give you that error you can just uh, either hit enter or control c to get past that it's not a big deal if you use tmux a lot you're going to want to go in there and adjust that yourself um, but uh, hopefully at some point we'll all get on the same version of Tmux and that error will go away, but it's not a big deal. So once that's the case, we can go ahead and start creating something. I'm going to say vim, uh, we'll just say test.sh, sure. Now I can I to go into insert mode and I can hit control T and it brings up all my skeleton files. These are all my templates and they're in different folders. So if I wanted to do like, um, a C program, I go GCC and it lists out uh, the different inputs and stuff. I can I can go something like a hello world and it posts a hello world uh, function with the headers here with the GPL and stuff like that. So you can start off with a basic code like that. It has up in here, you comment this out if you're going to be using it as a server side script for in a C CGI bin, you can uncomment that and it puts the plain text or you can change that to HTML if that's your output. Um, let's go ahead and delete that and let's just look at it again I have them all listed I can type in HTML it lists all my HTML stuff I don't really use bootstrap anymore but I left my old bootstrap templates in there if you use them again I constantly add new templates I don't really move the old ones out phaser if I choose that it's going to list out um, all the uh, basic template for using phaser now let me go ahead and actually make this a test.ht oh not sh HTML and again I'll do T and I'll do phaser. Oh, that's a JS. I can do phaser HTML. And you can see now that I've set it as an HTML, it auto indented stuff. Now, let's say your auto indenting gets messed up. You copy and paste something in here. So I'll just do this. So let's do that. So I messed up some of the, let's do a little bit more. Just getting rid of all the indentations here. So all the indentation. And again, you want to make sure you have your file labeled properly because it looks at the, the file extension to know how to indent files. But you go ahead and hit F6, indents everything. F5 removes any tailing white space. So if, for example, I was here and I had a bunch of white space here, which is just wasted information. And sometimes when you copy and paste code, that happens. If I hit F5, it's going to move, remove on all lines through the entire file any tailing white space. So F6 to, re, to auto indent, F5 to clear out those things. F6 is one that I use all the time that I have in my configuration. So that's cool. So we've looked at two different things here. Uh, we've looked at auto indenting stuff. Uh, with F6, clearing out the lines code. And then again, when you're in insert mode, control T will bring up the templates. And again, sometimes they're full scripts. Sometimes they're just sections of scripts. So like JavaScript on key up, here's a function for listening to events. So it's not a full HTML page with JavaScript, but it's this is a function you would use with some examples for getting keystrokes. If I hit F6 here, it's not going to indent properly because I have this as an HTML file. If I exit out of this and I create a new file called JS and I do JS input, or let's just do JS on key up. There, see it indented properly because it's a JavaScript file. So you want to make sure that you have your files labeled properly. Now it should, uh, if we 
exit out of this and make it an HTML file again, which I saved this last time, I'll just go ahead and say, do, 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 basic index. So here's just a bare minimum HTML file with a, I don't say bare minimum, just I, the setup I like for starting web pages. I got some flex settings. I got stuff set up for small screens. I've got a function here to wait for the page to load, and I've got some basic input stuff. Um, if I was to then add, well, you can see there's JavaScript in here, but let's go ahead and add some more. I'll go Control T. I'll go JS, and I'll say I want to do a a post here. I can do a post function. And you can see it auto indented because even though I'm in an HTML file, it's now indenting the JavaScript properly because it's in the proper script tags. If it wasn't, it wouldn't indent it properly. Um, but yeah, control T, you can look through all of this. I got lots and lots of templates, 3JS, which is for creating 3D stuff in your web browser. I got CSS stuff. I've got a lot of HTML stuff, a few Python things, a lot of bootstrap. I don't use that anymore. Some phaser stuff, uh, navigation bars, and again, a lot of, um, if you do GCC, I've got some C code here for creating a basic hello world file, for getting user input, writing the files, uh, using colors on your output in C stuff, and again, some more HTML stuff. So that's stuff that I just use regularly, like if I want to create a progress bar or a button or a photo gallery. I have a couple of photo galleries in here for that are CSS and HTML. So I can, if I want to have a photo gallery on a web page, I can just run that and it puts the basic code there and then I can tweak it and modify it for different things. Uh, they both have modals. So uh, basically when you click on an image, it's going to bring up a, a little full size image of that picture. So that, that, oh yes, don't want to forget other functions. So let's go ahead and just say, um, I want to open up multiple files. Let's go ahead and save this one, even though it's all messed up. We'll make the vim.js, and again, we'll just put in some JavaScript code here, phaser JavaScript, whatever. So now I, I have this open. Now I can hit uh, comma F when I'm not in, in insert mode, so I'm not typing stuff. And it's going to list all the files in my current directory in subdirectory. So normally you're in a project folder. So here, my other file was called test.html. I can type that in using Fuzzy Finder real quick. It found it. So now I have both things open. I can now hit comma B, and it's going to open up this screen, and it lists all of my um, buffers that are open. So I, I, I'm at the HTML one. I can go to the JavaScript one. Let's go ahead and, and um, pick another file. So again, I can hit comma F for file. It's going to list all the files in my current folder and subdirectory. So I'm in a project or whatever, and I want to go, let's say I want to go to the license. You can see it there. I can arrow up to it, or I can just type in LIC, oh, and it brings me to it. I can go to that or the GPL license here, uh, but I'll go ahead and click this. So now I have three files open, three buffers. Comma B will list them, and you can see that I have HTML. I can go to JavaScript. I can't go to the license because I'm already at it, but I can go back and forth between these. So comma F, I can again look through these different files. I'd say I want to open up the readme file. It's now open, comma B for buffer. It's going to list all the files and I can pick which one I want to go to. So they're all open. So I can be working on multiple files at once. It's easy to search through them. It's easy to find them. And then, um, you know, if you do make changes to one and then move to another, and then you try to exit out. It's going to tell you, oh, you have changes in the buffer test.js that you didn't save. So it will bring you there. And then you can write those changes. And then you can exit out no problem. And if you have multiple files that need changes, it will bring you to each one as you try to exit. Uh, so those are the main things I use it for. I, the, the, I think I, I've added other functionality, mainly those plugins. You know, obviously I have it set up so you have the numbers over here, the line number that you're on, and then you can see the other lines. So I have the relative line numbers. So you might ask what that's for if you're not familiar with that. Right now I'm on line eight. You can see that right here. But let's say I wanted to go up to this line up here. If I didn't have relative numbers, that would be listed as line two, and that'd be easy. I can go to line two, but let's say I'm at you know, a couple hundred lines down. I got to do the math to move up. Here I can see six. I can see this is line six up. I can just hit six and hit up and it will bring me to that line. So I can say, let's say I wanted to go to this 
update function. I can just type in 10 and down arrow and it brings me to it. If I want to go up to this create function or in between the create function, I can hit set three up. And if you're only moving a couple lines, it's not a big deal, but if you're jumping all the way down the page, it, it makes a difference. So yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other functionality I have in here. Obviously it has the color coding I like, the line numbering I like. The big thing is the templates, the control T, again, you gotta be in insert mode, control T to search these templates. And it's just anytime there's something I create regularly or use regularly uh, or think I might want. Oh, if you hit escape, it will say cat because it, it is trying to run a script there. You can just delete that. Um, but again, I'll just delete all this and give you an example. If I want to do CSS, Oh, so buttons, so that's the CSS. So if I, this is my, I can go through all these. I, I probably should be going through all my different templates because it's boring. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that if you would like to see that. Uh, but this is the CSS for my default HTML page. And then I have different color buttons uh, and the different CSS for that. So I hope that wasn't too complex. I hope this is something that you guys might find useful. People have asked me about it before. Um, but yeah, if you just remember control T, that's the big thing. And then obviously control six for auto indenting because that makes a big difference, especially if you're copying paste stuff. I have it set up to automatically use two spaces for the indentation. I don't like tabs and a lot of people use four spaces. I think that's too much. <laughs> Things get indented too much. So I have it set to two tabs, uh, but yeah. Again, this is all stuff I made for me. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, that's another thing. So you're exiting out of Vim. So I want to exit out. Lots of times I'll hit control, uh, I'll hit shift Q down here <laughs> by accident. I have it set to exit. Oh, it should be, should exit. Oh yeah, so it's automatically changing. And if I do control exclamation mark and then hit enter. Okay, yeah, I guess as long as I don't backspace or anything, if I backspace that changes stuff up. Well, it worked that time. Anyway, you should be able to do a capital Q and exclamation mark. It always works when I'm normally exiting out. Um, so, cause it's, you tend to hit shift colon and I'm gonna hit shift to the exclamation mark. So I tend to accidentally hit shift for the Q. It's gonna automatically change that to a lowercase Q for you. I like that. Um, although somebody's gonna recommend doing something even shorter than that, I think, in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, let's see, and I hope that you have a great day. Filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K. Again, right here, and you go to software, and go to my GitLab page, or check out the links in the description. If you like my videos, check out my Patreon page. Get videos early and support me. I, I do appreciate it, and I hope that you have a great day.